Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So today we've got something a bit different. It's a job, or it's a similar job to what I've done in the past before. Um, we've got a bit of line boring to do in the lathe. So here's a photo of the first time I line bored in my lathe. Now this is before my YouTube days. Yeah, well that was um, a bit of a mission to, to set up, but it was the job um, for my backhoe. So the, the boom assembly of the backhoe mounts to that trunnion. And so took the opportunity then to make up a bit of gear so I can do something like that in the lathe. So, of course, nowadays I've got a horizontal borer in the new shop, which is not yet um, ready for use. Uh, it's coming in the future. So we've got a, yeah, it's a secondary hook of a Caterpillar Quick Hitch and we have to rework the bores in them. So let's swing you around and we'll see what the job entails. Yeah, so basically we have this, um, it's a tongue. It's a secondary locking mechanism for the uh, main locking jaw on the Quick Hitch. So, um, if you don't know what a quick hitch is, it's an attachment that fits on the front of an excavator in between the dipper arm and the bucket. Here's a photo. And that allows the operator to, to swap buckets quite quickly and efficiently, usually. Um, back in the day before quick hitches, we used to have to knock the pins in and out. It was a total pain in the ass. Anyway, this secondary locking pin or tongue, they always flog out these bearing bores. So we have to rework these bores. Now, it's not really a, th a thing you want to weld up and bore. So what we're going to do is, is put oversized bearings in them. So we'll take a clean up cut in the bore, making sure the lion's share of the clean up cut is on this area of the bore here and the thin section here, it's only just a, a very light witness clean up there. And uh, that will not affect the strength or integrity of the part. And then there'll have to be oversized bearings made up to fit the um, new balls. So the oversized bearings are, if I do the bearings, we'll do that in another video. So they'll be hardened and ground bearings. So the first thing that we need to do anyway is get these set up in the lathe and get our bores reworked. Okay, first thing we've got to look at is how we're going to hang on to this thing in the lathe. So I have this fixture plate here which mounts on my lathe. So This will sit on there, on the plate, we'll clamp it down. Whether I've got to drill an, uh, another couple of holes in the, in the fixture plate is yet to be determined. But what we need is, a, is an easy way to centralise the part. So, there's a lot of varying methods you can use to, to align the bores when you're line boring. I'm just going to go with a dead simple way. I'm going to we'll just set a couple of bearings in the worn bores, one on each end. Now I have this piece of shafting here, it's an old hydraulic cylinder, so I'll cut the clevis off. And this is um, quite a neat fit on the bearings. So this will get us within the ballpark of where we need to be. And when it's in the, in the machine with the boring bar set up, then we can do a final fine-tune adjustment on it. So that will get us in the area we need to be. So first thing I'll go to the saw. We'll cut this clevis off this old um, cylinder ram and get our fixture plate set up in the lathe. And part of setting up for line boring 
on my lathe it involves removing the compound slide. So that's also a good opportunity to clean up some of the cesspool underneath it. Always pack this, you know, put a fair bit of grease in this area here, but it still turns to this sludge. So we'll get that cleaned out while we're at it. Now for our fixture setup that goes on the carriage. Um, I have some holes drilled that I had drilled and tapped in the carriage. And I just keep uh, some grub screws in them just to keep all the crap out of the holes. Now these are ones that I've drilled and tapped some time ago when I originally set this um, piece of tooling up. And at the time, uh, the bridge port wasn't even powered up. I had it in the workshop here because I know when I made the boring bar, I had to manually slot the square holes with the quill. So these would have all the fixture plates were all machined in uh, little old Hong Fak Wong, the, the little Chinese uh, bench top mill. So yeah, we've got grub screws in, it's purely just to keep the crap out of the holes. So we have these plates. Now these only some of these only go on one way around as I have a recess um, dimpled in here to clear um, the dowels and whatnot. Now just using our socket head cap screws. Let's go down onto here. The other one, making sure we get it right way around so the dimples clear the dowel and the oilers in the carriage. And these just simply screw down like so. I did take a lot of time when I did machine these to make sure they were as flat as I could possibly get them on the back as not to induce any warp um, into the carriage. And just a light nip down. That's all I need. Now I am moving the carriage as I nip these down, just to make sure there's no twisting or anything untoward going on. Okay, there's our base plate for our fixture. So let me round up the rest of the parts and I'll bring you back. Now as far as mounting our fixture plate, we take use of our slots, our T slots that we have machined in these plates. So we have our T-slots, T-slot nuts, short studs, and I have these adjusters. These are a, um, a height adjuster, so it's just has a very fine thread. just to allow for a, a final height adjustment. So these will sit over the top of the studs. And our fixture plate. Sits over the top. Okay, we can nip this down now. and then work out the position where 
and how we're going to mount our workpiece. I don't tighten anything down at this stage as it's um, things could change. And I've got a dodgy Chinese stud here. There she goes. Cheap and cheerful. <laughs> As only the Chinese can do it. Okay, so. Fits like a fucking cock in a shirt sleeve, this thing. Or well, this stud. And the nut. Okay. Now let's get our part set on there and we'll come to a plan of how we're going to mount it. So what we've got to look at and bear in mind is we don't have very much height to play with. So we'll just bring our tail stock in just for now. Just get a bit of an indication of where this thing's likely to sit. So as it is like that, we're sitting too high. So that's not going to work, so we we'll flip the part over. And we'll see if we can come to some arrangement here. Okay. I think that's going to work like that. So we need to get a couple of packers underneath we can sit this thing on and a packer under the front. So I've got a couple of parallels. sit there. Have another check with our tail stock. And actually that's looking quite reasonable there. That's within our range of height adjustment now. We've just got to bring the whole show over a bit. Now I really only want this mounting on uh, three, three points of contact. So I'll put a packer, something under the the end there, and then uh, I'll go and dig out some clamps so we can clamp this down in some form or fashion that it's not going to interfere with the boring bar. Now our basic clamping which I've come up with is a pretty simple solution. So just a couple of studs, a couple of clamps, clamp down to our base plate. As before we're going to use these couple of parallels and the front face of this clamp to support the part. Now I've left these uh, loose for final adjustment. The front two are just nipped down just to hold it in place so it doesn't move when I tighten everything down. So our part will go on like that. That gives us access to the lower bolt down here. We don't need access to that one. So, we have a strap clamp to go across the rear. Another cheap and cheerful wobbly nut. Make sure everything's straight. and the same for the front. Now we just eyeball it square with our fixture plate. Everybody's looking close enough there.
So just a gentle nip down. Now you've got to remember too, your clamping is relative to what machining operations you are going to be doing. We're only doing a very light machining operation, just putting, you know, attending to the bore. So we don't need a great deal of um, strong clamping. So this, um, I can't see any problem with what we're going to, with our plan here. I think we'll be fine. Well, not I think, we'll know. I know we'll be fine. <laughs> you only get one shot at it, otherwise you've got to redo it. Okay, so now we'll just centralise our part. Let's bring our tailstock back in. Now I can see we've got to shift over. What I'm going to do now, we'll just give it a couple of taps over, I think. Now I can see we've got to come up a little bit. So you can see, looking at this angle there, our part has to come up to centralise on the bore. So this is where we use these screw adjusters there, and we'll raise the entire fixture up to where we're at the right height. Okay, now we can just poke our bushes in. This end is not really worn on the end, it is worn in the middle, so we'll put the other bush in the other end. Now, remember that alignment bar we spoke of, that scrap of hydraulic rod at the beginning of the video. So we'll poke this through. So uh, interesting that. Um, these bores are a bit out of alignment. Okay, so if we grip that end in the chuck, that end in the tail stock, we can use this to centralise our part. And what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to get I'll have a look for some shim stock and if you remember we didn't want to take anything off the lower edge of the bore to maintain its strength and integrity. I might get a piece of say 10 thou shim stock, slip it underneath, then centralise our bore, clamp it down, well centralise our bore, then I'll slip the 10 thou shim stock out the part will drop down 10 thou and I can clamp it down and we should be good to go and that should give us the offset of the bore that we require to mainly take our cut from this side of the bore and just have a witness clean up on the other side if that makes sense. I have some 10 thou shim stock Just cut four shims. Damn good tin snips, these ones. Bets made in Sheffield, England. They've been really good, so. If you're after a really good set of tin snips, well, I'd buy these again without a drama. Okay, so we've got our thin strips here, so we'll place these underneath our adjusters on both sides.
that way if we need a quick adjustment we can just um, pull those shims out if required. Okay, now the reason we put them under the adjusters instead of underneath the part, the, 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 if I put them under the part, when I slacken the clamps off, the part may move out of alignment. If I put them under my fixture plate, the rear mounting bolts, I do not have to loosen them off to alter it to do a tenth hour change in front here. I can just put a pry bar under the front, just gently flex this back up a bit because it will flex on the little studs. The part will stay in alignment and I can just make an easy shim adjustment just there. Okay, so let's um, get our part centralized. So I'll have to grip this end in the chuck and this end um, by the tailstock center. So I better move the camera otherwise you're going to go out of the frame. So what I want to do is to just get the end of the bar into the chuck. I'll tighten the chuck up while I take a bit of weight on here. Actually looking at this, I'm actually a bit high. Yeah, so I've got to lower my rear adjusters down. Okay, actually I had a wooden wedge still stuck in the back there. I didn't realise it was there. I used a wooden wedge um, to hold the fixture plate up while I was putting those shims in. So, we'll nip down our chuck. Now, we'll just have to wind these adjusters in a little bit. my wooden wedge again just to take the weight off. Need to make sure there's no no weight on these um Wedges uh, on these adjusters. There is a little bit on the rear ones here. Tailstock back up. Nip our chuck down. Okay. So our bore in our part is aligned. So now I just snug these adjusters up till I just touch the plate. I should have um, 
drilled holes in these adjusters in the sides just to make it easier to access them. I could put a pin in the side of them and use the, the pin to rotate them. Okay, I've got a little bit of weight on those ones. Let's just take a little bit more. Find it's easier to access the rear ones with a pair of pliers. Okay, a little bit of weight on there, a little bit on there, feels pretty even as long as you get them even. Now the true test, our bar's still free. True test will be when we nip it down if we have to do another adjustment. Okay, that's everything tight. If we can still spin our bar at that stage in the bore, we're in a good position. So that's dead in alignment with the original bore. So what we want to do now is take those two shims out and take our, our setup bar out. We don't need that anymore. We take our rear shims out, clamp the back back down, and that'll give us in perfect alignment so our hole is slightly biased towards the top by a ten thousandths of an inch. Right now, because we're not altering the clamping of our part to the fixture plate, the part will not move off the fixture plate. And we're still tight here on the front of the fixture plate, so we're just slacking off the rear. Pull our shims out, I'll just use a spanner to, as a bit of a lever. Pull our shims out and go ahead and snug down the rear. Okay, so in actual fact we've altered the centre of the hole by ten, ten thousandths of an inch. Right, so we can get our boring bar in position now and get a tool set up. We slide our boring bar through. And I'm going to try and use my tailstock centre to support the end of the boring bar. As when you support it with a standard centre, um, you can get a bit of vibration, a bit of chatter. So hopefully now we've got our tailstock chuck centre. Well, uh, stop that problem.
Okay. So we've got three holes, three options to put a tool in in this boring bar. So it takes a uh, 5 16 square tool and two grub screws on the top to lock the tool in place. Now when I did made this boring bar up I do have the holes offset so the top of the square is just a bit above centre height so when I grind my tool I do not have to take much off the top of the tool blank for the tool to be on centre and I find that works quite well. So it's just a matter of now picking a location what we need to do is keep the length of our bar as short as possible. So say for instance we use that location, that will allow us to do that bore. Not that one. The next hole along, now we're going to hit our chuck. So we'll just have to slide the boring bar out a little bit. until we have good clearance at the end here. I'd say somewhere about there. So we're using this location. And we're clear here. And we're clear of the chuck at the other end. And make sure everything's tight. Chuck, different chuck key, of course. Our tail stock's locked. Okay, I'll go and find a tool and we'll put a trial cut through. Uh, earlier on in the setup, I did switch the parallels that we had underneath here just for a strap clamp as it, the parallels were sticking out too far and I thought it might interfere with our lathe chuck. 